He says our real or permanent identity is that we are pure spirit or soul. Now, when the soul comes into contact with this material world, it becomes conditioned or influenced in three basic ways. These ways are goodness, passion, and ignorance. 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 Passion. Would you mind? Thank you. As we shall see, under the influence of these three qualities, the soul behaves satisfied, active, or helpless. Namaste. I am the mode of goodness. Under my influence, the soul becomes conditioned by a sense of happiness and well-being. So, you may become a poet, a philosopher, a teacher, or even a monk. Your living habits will become very clean and simple. And you'll be inclined to work, but for the welfare of others. Beware, however, that I may trick you into a sense of comfort and complacency and thus ruining your chances for spiritual liberation. Or else you are going to be really tired. 
you have to work harder and harder and you really get frustrated your wife is going to want more and more and finally the government will take away all your money so man you will be all yellow <coughs> my father i my father ah. are you really going to drink now in front of all these people? <laughs> What? I didn't lie. Whoa, all right. <laughs> Settle down. Wow. Unsuspecting, and I don't think you'll have any problem. You? Huh? Okay, let's get ready. Oh, spirit soul, I summon you to this material world. This is your playground. unaware that he'll be under the control of these three modes at every step. Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita that at times the mode of passion becomes prominent, defeating the mode of goodness. At other times, the mode of goodness defeats the mode of passion. Yet, at other times, the mode of ignorance defeats passion and goodness. Then, Krishna talks about the mode of goodness. He says, this mode 
be more pure than the other two is illuminating and frees one of all sinful reactions. Those situated in the mode of goodness develop knowledge. However, he can become conditioned by this concept of happiness. Namaste, spirit soul. Namaste. Come, let us go for a nice walk in the countryside. I brought us a picnic lunch. The air here is so clean, so peaceful. Here, we can get away from the agitating elements of the city. Here, please sit down. I brought us some nice, pure spring water. Thank you. You're welcome. organic fruit. Mm. Most delicious. Isn't that nature beautiful? I mean, just see. Those rolling hills. Those beautiful birds. Their sweet singing song. I feel like I'm meant to live in the harmony with nature and enjoy its bondy. Oh goodness. When I'm with you, I feel like to live in live and just to enjoy God creation. Next, Krishna describes the mode of passion. He says when there's an increase in the mode of passion, the soul develops great attachment, unlimited desires, and intense endeavors. describes the mode of ignorance. He says, when there's an increase in the mode of ignorance, the soul displays madness, illusion, inertia, and darkness. Slow down, spirit soul. You are too hard. You really get tired. I got us something. Have some refreshment. Feeling better already? Don't you? And you can go far in this world, but you work too hard. 
took a shower. fruits and vegetables around. Why should I do that? <laughs> well, one who is truly interested in becoming happy must learn to live in harmony with nature by purifying the heart. The cruelties of animal slaughter actually harden the heart more and more. Oh goodness, <laughs> when I'm with you, I feel like living a simple life, a wholesome life. I want to spend more time in study and advance myself in knowledge. Yes, only with me can you see things as they actually are. You'll never gain any enlightenment associating with these lower fellows, ignorance and passion. There's a book that I would like you to read. In this book, it tells you how to awaken your intelligence so that you can properly distinguish between food, worship, and activities in all the three modes. You should read it very carefully so that you can avoid the tricks of ignorance and passion. Thank you, goodness. I will. Bhagavad Gita as it is. Hmm. Let's see what it says. Oh, here. It says, one in the mood of ignorance doesn't work by regulated principles. 
he wants to extrinsically for no purpose even though he has capacity to do work he make no endeavor that sounds sometimes like me one in the mood of passion doesn't work is never satisfied with the position he already acquired and want to seek it more and more he develops a great hankering for sex gratification that sounds some type like me that must be a passion a person in a mood of goodness he is satisfied with his work and intellectual pursuit in the mood of goodness one can see things as they are Wow. You see, spirit soul, under my influence, you can become happy. You can work to save the environment. You can become a vegetarian. You can get into art, literature, fine music, so many nice things. Ah, don't listen to goodness. Come with me. Come with me. With me. Now, spirit soul, don't be influenced by this stupid mode. <laughs> Come, let us focus on holistic living so that you can make your life here as pure and pleasant as possible. But wait, just a second. It says here, if I want to be serious, I have to transcend all three modes. One doesn't need to accept the dictation of this material body. I'm not this body. I'm a spirit soul. Wow. By performing devotional service to Krishna or God, one destroy the reaction of past karma and doesn't create a new reaction and thus he is not born to this material world. and travel to the spiritual world. Wow! But spirit soul. Oh goodness. Thank you goodness. By your influence, I was able to give up the bad habits forced upon me by mode of passion and mode of ignorance. Now I can see things clearly. But I'm not this body. I don't meant to be in this material world. I belong to the spiritual world. But How I go there? Who can tell me? Maybe this book will help me. Bhagavad Gita as it is. It says, One can very quickly transcend the three modes of chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Hare Krishna! Krishna Krishna! More of ignorance, <laughs> Narayana Prabhu, <laughs> and a poor, gentle spirit soul. 
Anju Gupta Mataji. And the music was by Ramesh Cherpala and also Tukaram Prabhu. Give them a big round of applause, please. Hare Krishna. <laughs> so, uh, the books that they were talking about the Bhagavad Gita as it is, and many other such books that talk about Bhakti Yoga in general and the Krishna Conscious Movement are available downstairs. We have a great 